Hi guys, Whiskey Geek here. Now there was a subject which came up over the Christmas break a couple of times which I kind of wanted to explore. I don't like blends. I've heard it said a number of times and I've been guilty of saying it myself and I don't think it's quite fair. Now it's true that a lot of the blends on the market at the moment are directed at a very different group of people. Not at whiskey enthusiasts but at casual consumers. So it's tailored more towards that side of the market rather than whiskey enthusiasts. And because of that there is a much higher proportion of poor quality whiskey in the blends segment than there are in the single malts. When you really get down to it, a single malt whiskey is blended. The only real stipulation is that it's blended by the same distillery, same geographical location. So if the single malts that we come to love are flavour profiles which have been crafted and have been put together by different whiskies, different ages, different uh, casks, then arguably it's still a blend. It's just a more specific blend, a more tailored blend. So when you look at it in that context, a single malt crafted by a particular master blender for a particular distillery versus a blended whiskey made en masse for a less discerning market, it's safer to say you don't like blends because you're more likely to get an enjoyable whiskey in the single malt segment. And that's where I think it comes from fundamentally. But I don't think it's fair. One thing that doing the advent calendar really highlighted to me is that there are some excellent blended whiskies available. Douglas Lang in particular has a quality range. The Scallywag 13, the Rock Oyster, the Big Pete, they were all lovely whiskies. So it was talking to my uncle which made me see a little bit of whiskey snobbery and a little bit of hypocrisy in myself. Um, he said he likes whiskey so long as it's not a blend. Earlier in December it had been my birthday and it was suggested by my sister that we attended one of these whiskey blending sessions and I shot it down and said I don't really like blended whiskey. Now given that at the time I was working my way through that Douglas Lang advent calendar it was a little bit silly. What really put me off it though was the cost of it for four of us to attend and being pigeonholed by that particular host. If I do it in the comfort of my own home then I've got all of this whiskey to play with all of this whiskey to explore and tailor things. Now one thing that's really great over here in the UK around Christmas time is the swathe of gift sets um, and deals that come through supermarkets and shortly after Christmas the supermarkets want to ditch all this excess stock. So we were walking around one of the supermarkets recently and I spotted one of these. So this is a Shivas whiskey blending kit. This has got five different ingredient whiskies and a sample of their 12 year old blended whiskey. It's also got some quite nice glassware in it which really sealed the deal for me. A little beaker and a glass pipette and I picked this up for 16 quid. Now I've not really had any Shivers products in years because the last ones I did have I wasn't a big fan of so it'll be interesting for me to revisit the 12 year old now that my palate's developed a bit um, and also to see whether I can chuck a blend together and explore the art of blending so in the back of my mind, going into this, I think what makes a great blend is great ingredients. Whether these will be great ingredients or not, I have no idea. But I've got a few single casks of my own which I should be able to tailor things and uh, hopefully come up with something which I quite enjoy. So their directions are to taste the 12 year old signature house blend and then have a go at mixing your own. So what I'm going to try doing instead is sampling the ingredient whiskies in small quantities and just come up with some real quick pointers on the flavour profiles of them, the strength of them and what they're going to add to the whisky and then try coming up with a little blend. If I can hit the nail on the head and get something which I enjoy then I'll put it together and fill my own little bottle. Now these have all been proofed down to 40% which already for me is a little disappointing. So this floral grain is actually already starting as a blend. So that's the one they recommend being the basis, the starting point. Then we've got a fruity single malt, fruity soft and full bodied, a citrus fresh and soft, creamy luxurious and velvety and then smoky peaty and intent. This is something I'm actually quite excited to try and do so I'm going to geek out fully and try and take it seriously. I'll just be using normal spring water to cleanse the palate in between sampling um, and jotting down some quick notes. Let's start off with the floral and see what I get. 
sweet vanilla fudge and a little bit grassy. Now obviously one thing that I need to be careful about tailoring is the intensity of the flavours and what percentage of the ingredient is going to go into the final blend. I don't expect there's going to be anything particularly pungent, but this one is quite delicate. There's no bite, there's no alcohol prickle. As it's mellowing, I'm beginning to get like a, those white orchard blossom trees, citrus and pollen. So I'll do the nose for each of them and then progress onto the palate for each of them to avoid them kind of muddling with each other and, and killing the nose. Ooh, that's heavily malty, gristy. It's got quite a hoppy tone to it. Now they've called that one fruity, but it's citrusy. Maybe like those um, tinned peach slices. But it's definitely the gristy, hoppy side of things, which is most prominent for me. So I've marked the fruity one down as being less delicate than the floral, but it's still not massively pungent. It'll be interesting to see what the citrusy one is by comparison, because I found that one to be fairly citrusy. Predominantly cereally with like a lemongrass. They've called that one soft, but it's beginning to get a little bit of an alcohol bite to it. So compared to the others, I think it's actually more... No, it is slightly softer than the fruity one. Only a little bit though. Now for the creamy one. Cream soda. A little bit grassy, that one smells quite similar to some of the refill hogsheads which I've got. It is quite rich and smooth though. Of them all so far, I think that's the most delicate. You can see that easily getting swamped by the fruity and the citrus. So this is the smoky one. Probably the most interesting of the lot so far, but it's still kind of bland. It's an earthy pea, but it's quite soft. It reminds me, it's very reminiscent of Jura, where it's kind of coastal, kind of sandy. There's a meatiness to it as well. But in comparison with the fruity malt, it's really bringing out the, the fruity sweet side. Stacks of apples and pears now. I do think in terms of delicacy, in terms of prominence, the fruity one has probably got the most heft behind it. And even though you've got to play careful with peat, this one is quite soft, it's quite subtle. Each time I go back to that fruity one, it's become more appealing. That floral grainy one is doing very little for me. And of course, the reason that most blenders will use grain as a base is because it's cheap. I'm not all that fussed about that. I've already paid for this. So I'm inclined to steer more towards the malts and flavors. So my ultimate goal here, I suppose, really, is to make a blend which I actually prefer to any of the ingredient whiskies. Because ultimately, if all I've done is dilute my enjoyment of a single malt, I can see that as a failure. So now to see how those translate onto the palate. And that was actually really nice. It's a thick, creamy butterscotch and vanilla. Tiny little prickle, and the finish is a little bit solventy. So now the fruity one. Predominantly cereally. It is like sticking your head in one of the, you know, in a wash bag. Um, and it's very reminiscent of Bow Blair because it's quite an orchard fruity um, wash. It's quite light and uh, cider-like. But it's still got that kind of carbon dioxide, alcoholy heft carrying the, the flavours. Now I want to see if the progression on the second sip is more fruity. It's certainly opening and developing more fruity um, pear slices, orchard fruits. But on the palate, the only thing that's really building is a kind of a tanniny bitterness. And the finish is quite warm on that one, reasonably long, medium long. And it's uh, the hops and the tannins that are really carrying through. It's an interesting malt. Citrus. On the palate, it's definitely more hay and grass than it is citrus, but it begins to build a citrusy tone towards the finish. It's a little bit coarse, that one. The finish is quite subtle, um, with the cereal tones really taking prominence. It's another creamy one. Quite like the creamy one on the nose. That seems to be all about the body and very little to do with the taste. It's just very, very absent on the palate. That's quite a weird whiskey, to be honest. So on the nose, it's very soft and smooth. The cream soda is, is a rich smell, um, quite enjoyable. On the palate, it's all about the mouthfeel, very absent in the flavor. And then on the finish, it's quite cereally and there's, there's an astringency, which is gonna make it hard to, you know, you're gonna wanna use the nose end of it to get that smooth, luxurious feel but then the finish side of it is gonna be sharp and bitey. So they, they kind of contradict. 
it's super soft, a little bit generic, it's quite earthy, a whiff of uh, peaty smoke, bitter tannins, the meatiness has kind of gone on the palate. Now that too on the finish has a bit of a prickle to it. Now on the palate I can see why they're, being, they're advising you're cautious about using that one because it's going to swamp pretty much anything else that I've tasted here. So on the nose my favourites were probably creamy, the development of the fruity, the complexity of the smoky, but then on the palate my favourite was probably the floral. A little bit of interest in the fruity, I like the mouth feel of the creamy, but the flavour profile of the rest of them I wasn't that fussed about. So what I'm kind of tempted to try for the first blend is completely ignoring the citrus and the smoky. I want the fruitiness, I want the sweetness, and I want the mouthfeel. Let's give that a try. So let's go predominantly grain, I think. Let's call that three mil of the floral. Let's do about the same of the creamy. Three mil of the creamy. I'll start gentle with the fruity. I think I'll do one and a half mil and see how that fares. So that creaminess is super prominent. It's basically swamping the other flavors. There is a sweetness coming from the floral grain. I think the only reason that I think I can smell hops is because I know it's there. Whether or not that's, you know, auto-suggestion, I have no idea. So I want to try and overpower the creamy a little bit. Taking floral up to four and a half mil. Now I only put one and a half of fruit in there and it was basically lost. So what I think I'm going to do is go past double in that. It's like super creamy vanilla now. I want more of that fruit. So what I like in my whiskey is a little bit of interest. So the hops and the developing orchard fruits was probably the most interesting thing here. The creamy was nothing remarkable, but it was very pleasant, as was the floral. So what I really want is, is to kind of bolster the interest with these other elements. That's getting a bit more interesting. It's a little bit herbal and there's like um, peach slices. I think that's the fruity and the creamy coming together. It's a vanilla fudge. It's not my first try to be honest. The palette is really rounded and friendly. Loads more of that vanilla and a little bit gristy. And then the finish comes through quite warm. A tiny bit of prickle but nothing that you know really stands out and it lingers quite nicely. Although it's really generic. Quite like that. Not bad. I want to see what adding a touch of smoke does to it. Let's be real gentle here, just do a quarter of a mil. Even that was probably too much. Yep, too much. It's muddled the palate, it's, it's really rounded it and kind of killed off all of the interest. Ridiculously smooth and that little waft of smoke is really pleasant. So that wasn't a bad first try, but it was a little boring. Gonna give it another try pulling out that hops and the kind of interesting flavor of the fruity one. So that's four mil of fruity. Super, super gentle floral this time. Three quarters of a mil floral. Three quarters citrus. Let's try it without the peat. Now that's interesting, that's got plenty of complexity to it. The hops and the fruit are there, but they've got a um, puddingy, vanilla-y tone to them. It's very sweet. The floral is kind of linking with the creaminess. It's like a very smooth pollen. I do like the nose on that, but it's possibly a little too friendly. It's really smooth, and interestingly, that creamy fudge is still fairly prominent, but then skips all of the fruitiness and kind of goes to um, very woody tannins. I don't want to skip that fruitiness, I don't want to overpower the fruitiness because that's the most interesting element. So this is a travel exclusive Balblair and it's really rich sherry influence. Thick brown sugar and Oloroso influence. And it's just not fair, it's a completely different league. Just a touch. Ooh. That Val Blair has added so much to it. 
It's really open the herbal, the kind of hoppy side of things. But there's rich leathery tannins. It's still super smooth. It's like candied orange peels. It's added a wealth of citrusy orange, stone fruits. It's really mellowed out the uh, tannins. It's less woody, it's more soft and rich. Now I'm conscious this video can't go on forever and left to my own devices, I'd probably still be here playing for another couple of hours. So I'm going to finish off by trying this Shivas Regal, see how my own attempts compare to that. Super creamy vanilla fudge. It seems to be all the emphasis on the floral and the creamy. Even on the suggestion that these types of whiskies may be in there, I'm struggling to find them. Heavy vanilla, bourbon influence, really quite mellow. A little bit cereally, a little bit grainy. Now that's interesting, it's got way more character on the palate, and I think that's coming from the smoky side of things. A tiny touch of it is helping to bring out other elements. So in summary, this is very, very drinkable, it's pleasant, but it's nothing special. I think I preferred the nose of my own attempt, but the palate of this was way richer. But then adding a touch of Battle Blair to uh, my own attempts just made it come alive. So there we have it, my own little blend. Now I did cheat a little bit because I pulled from other whiskies, but I think it makes a way better tasting experience, so sod it. But thanks for watching guys and facilitating my little experiments. It's been a fun kit to work through. It's been a little bit enlightening on the skill of blending. There's enough here for me to revisit it at some point and have another play around. Hopefully my attempt hasn't been too much of a failure and I look forward to sharing that and seeing what other people think. I'm gonna share that we've been trained. I'm a light citrusy. Smells good. Ooh, what strengths are? It tastes quite strong, quite sharp. It's got a nice smooth after flavor. It sort of leaves a creamy flavor in your mouth. It's good. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video please give us a thumbs up, drop a comment below and consider subscribing and I hope to see you next time. Cheers! <laughs>